What if I told you right now was the best time for you to retire? And not just for one or two reasons. No, I have eight reasons showing why it's a fantastic time right now to retire. Now, this video is primarily meant for those that just retired or have the capability to retire and just need that little extra nudge, or rather eight little extra nudges. The first reason you should retire is your retirement probably looks a lot better than it first seems. And this is because you're likely overestimating the amount you need to spend in retirement. Too often I see a common practice of taking a retiree that let's say has a starting goal income of $80,000. And then they take that number and simply increase it for inflation each and every year through the length of their retirement plan. Now, this makes sense on the surface. We know that inflation causes us to need income raises to just maintain the lifestyle of the previous year. But the thing is, a growing body of research is showing that retirement spending isn't some static inflation-adjusted target. Rather, it follows something similar to a smile. What this means is on the front end of retirement, you're probably gonna be spending a little bit more because you're more able to spend and get more out of your wealth in the go-go years. And then the preceding decades, as our health declines, the way we spend and can enjoy our money also declines. The bigger your discretionary budget, the steeper this decline ends up being. Well, let's take a 65-year-old couple with a life expectancy of 88 years. They need $100,000 for income starting out, and a straight line method would assume that the cumulative income they need over their retirement is gonna be about $3.2 million. If however, we adapted their plan to reflect more accurate retirement spending patterns, we would see that cumulative income drop to 2.6 million, an almost 19% reduction. Now, here's where things can get quite surprising for many watching this video. Depending on life expectancies, Social Security is estimated to cover $1.8 million of that total spending goal. About $800,000 to $900,000 will be left as a gap that this couple will need to fill. Now, even with a million dollar portfolio right now, this couple could put all of their money in treasury bonds and have a near guaranteed retirement, all from having a more accurate plan built from the start. Number two, know that right now we are in an extremely favorable tax environment. If you're working and making a decent income, some strategies like Roth conversions may not be viable because you'd be converting at too high of tax rates. However, if you were retired, large Roth conversions become extremely attractive because you have the ability to show much lower income and therefore fill in that income gap with Roth conversions. Well, until the end of 2025, you have the ability to pay taxes at lower rates than we will expect to see in 2026. This is due to something called the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act expiring. If Congress makes no changes, we revert back to those pre-2018 tax rates. This means most tax brackets rise by two to 4%. Standard deduction is cut for both married and single filers. And certain brackets like the 32% bracket are just down about $100,000. All of this means you will have more income taxed and it will be taxed at higher rates. Now I showed in a recent video how it won't be uncommon for a retiree to see their tax bill rise by 20 to 25% with this one tax shift alone. And so right now you have an opportunity to take advantage of the current tax system. And so that's a great reason to retire. Reason number three, tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Now there's a really impactful concept from this book called Die With Zero. I've talked about this in a few videos in the past. But this concept is around maximum enjoyment points. Think of this like a point system in which each year has a theoretical maximum number of enjoyment points that you can earn. Well, not every year is created equal and the main catalyst for that is health. The stronger your health, the higher your theoretical ceiling of those enjoyment points. So on average, everyone watching this video can expect this year to be the highest theoretical ceiling of those enjoyment points of any year that you have left. In fact, there will be a steep decline as you age. Now, this is a sobering thought, one that many don't want to think about, but nonetheless is a reality of life. And so let's say you're delaying retirement to ensure a high probability that you still have money left at, let's say, 96 if you live that long. Well, consciously or unconsciously, you're working in trading one of the most valuable years that you have left for one of the least valuable years you have left. It's like trading $100 to get $20 back. Now, no one would rationally make this trade when put in those terms, but yet when it's put in the terms of our life, uh, we don't necessarily see the exact same picture. And this is assuming you even live into your 90s. 
We all have tragic stories of friends and family that worked for 40 years only to retire and then pass away three years into retirement. Tomorrow is never guaranteed. If many of us could see the life hourglass above our heads, we would orient our lives completely differently. This is not to say that you should live carelessly and spend all of your money today and not worry about tomorrow, but rather remember the value of all of our days and remember specifically the value of today. And even if it's not you that will pass away early, it could be your spouse. And so use your time today wisely. Use your time with your spouse wisely. Number four, most of the things you're actively worrying about today, the things in the current news, will be meaningless to your retirement. Now, each of us has a bias, me included, to think that the times we are living in are unique or of extra importance. And that's really just because we're living through them. We didn't live through those past moments in time. There's a lot of uncertainty right now in the economy, geopolitics, financial markets, etc., etc. Turn on the news and you'd think we're in the most uncertain time in history. Because of this, you may be hesitant to retire. But when you think back across the obstacles the U.S. has faced and overcome, this idea of extreme uncertainty is a crazy one. Imagine being alive through two world wars or living through numerous assassinations of American leaders. What about retiring during the Cuban Missile Crisis? These were true periods of uncertainty. And although there have been pauses in economic growth, They've been short pauses. The train that is capitalism, that is human innovation, consistently overcomes uncertainty and we have no reason to believe this time is different. Yes, today's uncertainty seems different because you are actually living through it. But in the grand scheme of even American history, things are pretty calm right now. Number five, increased interest rates means that you're able to safely guarantee growth that hasn't been available to retirees in over a decade. Fixed rate MIGAs, something that are kind of like a CD from an insurance company, are currently offering guaranteed rates above 5% for a three all the way up to a seven year time horizon. Uh, treasury bonds are now offering 4% plus yield to maturities. Income annuities, for those looking to guarantee and floor their retirement income, are offering payouts that we haven't seen in 15 years. We've heard for the past decade how difficult a zero interest rate environment is for retirees. Well, now we are past that zero interest rate environment and this can be advantageous to retirees, especially as inflation seems to be calming down. Has your plan shifted to take advantage of these higher rates? Number six, keep in mind that retirement planning is meant to be conservative. And because of that, you're probably in a better financial position than you think or than it first looks. For instance, the 4% rule, which is based off a 1996 study, found that if you invest in a classic 60-40 portfolio and you live for a 30-year retirement, the lowest you could have afforded to take from your portfolio starting out was 4%. A million dollar portfolio delivers $40,000 of inflation adjusted income for that 30-year time period. Again, just to reframe this, this was the worst case of the past 100 years and it's assuming you lived a 30-year retirement. Over the same 100-year period, the average safe withdrawal rate was actually above 6%. Now, I think it is important to look at the worst case scenario. It does offer us confidence in certain ways, but I don't think that the worst case scenario should be your sole focus. If you're always focusing on the absolute worst case, you're always gonna have a reason to rethink your retirement timeline. Let me paint further context to this example. We wanna run a Monte Carlo for your retirement. We should be looking at simulations that are even worse than historical examples. There's no reason to think that the worst is behind us. Now, if you have a 97% probability of success of meeting your goals, that is a really good probability of success despite having a 3% risk of failure. On the top half of the screen, I show one of the worst trials this couple would have faced in those thousand simulations. They run out of money three years before the end of their plan, but look at the average rate of return of this trial. It's negative. What is the likelihood that your portfolio doesn't grow at all in retirement? On the bottom, I have one of the best trials through these thousand simulations, and it shows your money would have grown at 14%. Now, it's fairly rational to believe both of these outcomes are equally as likely to happen. They're at equal points on opposite ends of the spectrum. But rarely will a retiree's focus be put on that good trial. They will, however, put a lot of focus on the worst trial and subconsciously convince themselves that that worst trial is more likely to happen and their retirement isn't as safe as they want. Context matters. It needs to be applied here 
And many of you are in a better position than you think if you're just focusing on that worst case scenario. Reason number seven is another way to think about the strength of your plan through, once again, a reframing. I recently just talked about this idea in a recent video, and I'll link to that in the upper right hand corner here. It's an idea I call the safety gap. Think about the different income targets you have in your plan from an essential spending uh, standpoint to a discretionary spending, and then, and then looking at the most you could reasonably spend if your plan allowed for it. Now think about what you obtain in each of these spending categories and the associated probability of success of being able to spend that given amount. Well, with the example on the screen, this person has near certainty of being able to reach their essential spending goal really good odds of maxing their discretionary goal, and then a 70% chance of being able to spend more than this couple could reasonably spend. And so what is your goal for retirement? What are you truly retiring to? Reframing your plan in this way can be quite impactful. The number one thing many retirees want is time freedom. Freedom to spend time with those you love, doing the things you love, freedom in general. Often this can be obtained with just that essential spending goal, which oftentimes does have a very high probability of success. The discretionary goal now does offer a level of added convenience, comfort, and new experiences. And I don't want to downplay the importance of that discretionary spending goal, but a 91% probability of success of reaching this goal, despite it being less than most would be comfortable with, is still a really good probability of success. And so here's what I would recommend doing. Write down what your personal benchmark is for retirement. Write it down in non-financial terms. What do you actually want to get from your retirement? In many cases, your plan can already accomplish that. And if that's the case, why delay retirement? Finally, we move on to reason number eight. Many retirees have already accomplished the goal they had in order to be able to retire in the first place. Maybe this goal was reaching a million dollars of savings or $2 million of savings. It's gonna be different for everybody. But many of you watching this video have already reached that original goal and yet didn't retire when you did so. You were expecting, let's say, a $2 million portfolio to give you a sense of calmness, of certainty about the future ahead. And yet, once you reach that goal, it didn't overwhelm you with those feelings. In fact, it might have felt like nothing really changed at all. Because of this, many shift the goalposts and they think they need double what that original goal was and then they're going to get that level of comfort, that level of certainty. Or they feel they need to push back retirement three years because that will give them that added sense of certainty and calmness. And I'm not guiltless in this endeavor either. My wife just recently pointed out to me the other day how I recently just shifted some financial goalposts in my life. Evolution has put each of us on a hedonic treadmill where once we attain a certain level of success, we become used to it and start wanting more. And you can continue to run on this treadmill to the day that you die and you'll be left unfulfilled at this point. Or you can be aware of this treadmill, fight the urge, and step off of it. Now this is easier said than done. I personally know this, but if you needlessly shift the goalposts and that's the reason you're not retired, then you know that you can shift these goalposts back. You're the only one standing in the way of your retirement. And hopefully this idea and the seven others in this video will help you simply step out of your own way so that you can start living your best life. Now, if you like some of the ideas in this video, know that we recently just recorded a video talking about five proven and tested ideas that will completely reshape your retirement. Some of them I've touched on in this video and this video right here talking about those five ideas will simply expand further and some will be completely new ideas to you. Click on this video to learn more and always remember you don't need more money, you need a better plan.